I had worked about eight years after my MBA. I finished my MBA in 1992, uh, and then I worked for three years with ABN Amro Bank. Uh, learned corporate banking. Worked with uh, an American company. Brought them into India called AMF Bowling and tried to set up the start the bowling revolution, ten pin bowling in India. And then I joined G Capital uh, in their uh, uh, retail business called G Countrywide. What's called G Money today. So I think the career was going okay. It wasn't uh, phenomenal. It wasn't bad. It was a decent career. But I think there was something within which I hadn't really planned for entrepreneurship till the internet happened. So for me, the internet was the game changer. Being exposed to the internet at G, we were looking at new avenues for distribution. A new avenue being the internet in 98-99. That kind of resonated with me, and I did really, really believe that this is going to change our lives. Then I said, okay, if this is going to be a great platform, which I was convinced. Uh, what am I going to do? So I actually went about that process quite clinically, and I had two options. I was very clear I want to be on the B two C side. I understood uh, the consumer, and I enjoyed the B two C side. And I looked at not only online travel because it was a service, uh, and I thought would move online much faster. Uh, also looked at online stock broking. So I actually had plans for both, and uh, I think online travel was far more exciting. Uh, it was something I could relate to. So I, I took the plunge in uh, early 2000 uh, on April 1st, All Fools Day, and uh, yeah, it's been quite a ride. Travel for Indians is going through a phenomenal change. Uh, it's because a lot of Indians now are already seasoned travelers, and they're seeking beyond the ordinary. They want to do different stuff. I mean, uh, probably folks like you, folks like me, a lot of people want to do different. They're saying, yeah, we're done with the ordinary. So they want to, they're seeking out, could be adventure travel, could be wellness travel, could be eco travel, could be, uh, you know, just a very, very uh, unique kind where people are traveling the world in culinary trail travel and all, all that kind of stuff is happening. At the same time, large swaths of people are coming into the travel fold for the first time. This is first time disposable income. So they are saying we've bought our fancy phone, we've bought our fancy clothes, but you know, chutti bejana. And they will do the first thing. Now someone, the first thing for them could be to go to Goa, to go to Kashmir, to go to Ladakh. And it could also be the first international travel. So it could be to go to Thailand, to go to Singapore, to go to Dubai, which is the first, that's fine. Someone needs to be there to hold their hand. Now what you must appreciate is this generation of first-time travelers with disposable income because of their first job in a call center or whatever, they don't go to traditional travel agents like their parents did. They don't have connects, they've moved city. They might be from a small town, they've come into a big city, they don't have, they don't know any travel agent. They go to the web as their first port of call. And that's where they trust an old brand, a respected brand, a known brand like Make My Trip. And I think we can play a great role in helping them plan their first trip, taking them where they want to travel, and also be present in a form factor where they're comfortable with, and that's where mobile comes in. So I think our value and the trust we have built now of being around as a brand for 15 years is really helping us a lot. But people say, yeah, Make My Trip is an old respected company. We'll go with them, we've seen that. And I think our kind of care we give and our focus we give to our customers, things go wrong. This is the travel business due to no fault of ours. An airline could cancel the flight. We know it happens all the time. Hotels could bounce you somewhere between the hotel and us because they overbooked, but we are responsible. I can tell you we go the extra mile to take care of any customer where anything and that is paying off for us in a big time. Uh, it's a very interesting phase. So what is happening is mobile business has really, really taken off and already 40% of our traffic comes through mobile and within mobile app has become the most popular. And as we are going forward, we are seeing more and more people, especially first-time users, are only coming through app or only coming through mobile. They don't own another device. So when you go to tier two and tier three towns, which is a huge opportunity, I think, for all of us, uh, people don't own a computer, but they don't feel the need of a computer. They have a smartphone and their smartphone with 3G plan is their portal into the www. So I think that is, we're trying to change the way we think from being a web company to a mobile first company. And dare I say, at some point of time, we might have to be a mobile only company. But right now we're going mobile first and we're trying to think all our new product releases, all our engineering, everything is around mobile.
When we started uh, in 2000, uh, the vision for Make My Trip was to be the defining portal for people coming to India, uh, traveling within India and going out from India. So to, from and within uh, India was the, was the vision. Very soon we realized, we actually launched, so we launched in October 2000, six months after starting the company. We had both domestic travel, outbound travel, as well as inbound travel. Within three months, it was very clear, lots of lookers, very few bookers. So we saw our numbers, our conversion was pathetic, but our conversion for inbound travel was fantastic. So people were really, because those folks were already used to buying online, and not just travel, they were used to buying books online from Amazon, music online from Amazon, and travel from the other companies in the US. So we said, let's focus on that market. We had to conserve cash. The fact that we were pushed to the wall, and we had very little cash, means that you have to look at the best opportunities and not waste a single rupee on anything else. And that's the beauty of bootstrapping. When you're bootstrapped, you'll say, listen, I only have a very little amount of money. Let's say I have you know, 10 lakhs. Now in 10 lakhs, I have to break even the business. I have to, so you will naturally only do the best thing. I know the game has changed now. There's a lot of money available, etc., etc. But I think there's a big value of bootstrapping. So in 2003, Indian Railways IRCTC was born. I think they did a great, great service to all of us in e-commerce, where they got Indians comfortable to buy online, to trust buying online. No one was buying till then. So I think that was a game changer. The other game changer for my business was uh, the advent of low-cost carriers. So low-cost carriers changed the game for us and provided us a great opportunity, which was that the traditional travel agent did not want to sell a low-cost carrier ticket. That was an opportunity for us, which I think we seized very quickly, where we said, if we were to build direct connects into the host system of these airlines, then we can obviate all of this. The value prop in 2005 that we offered our customers was, get all the choices, make an informed choice. For the first time, the consumer was in control. We actually crossed an interesting milestone in Indian rupees last financial year. Our gross booking number uh, was 1.6 billion, so we crossed 10,000 crores, which is a sizable amount of business we did. Our net commissions was about 140 million US. So you have to have the flexibility of a small company, and a, but the focus, complete focus of an entrepreneur. And that is where we figured that, we, listen, we want to engage with these companies. We want to be involved in some, we'll probably you know, do, take a very large stake, even 100% we've done complete. And I think this is a very exciting way for us to get involved with the ecosystem and to ensure that we don't lose out on some of the more innovative ideas that are going. I think I was very conscious and it was always at the back of the mind that the bowling business had failed. And I actually think that failure in my case uh, actually helped me a lot and uh, to egg me on. What happened in uh, Make My Trip was uh, we had a dream start. So 2000, 2001, everything went great. I got some early stage funding from a fund called eVentures. Very soon, within a year, I think 15 months, literally everything turned. Basically, dot-com bust. Uh, those waves had reached the Indian shores. But 9-11 uh, really hit out on travel. Uh, and we were essentially doing NRI travel US India. So 9-11 impacted us greatly, as did SARS. I think what kept us going, and at least kept me going, was I just did not want to uh, give up too early. I believed that we were onto something. And the right side of the brain uh, really helped say that, yes, this is, this is better, but this is, this is real, because we were improving on the key statistics week on week. And we always measure our business, you know, week on week. That, I think, analytical kind of way, and it's just a kind of something which, you know, comes to you naturally. It's, you can't thrust it upon. But if you look at that and you see improvement, and I tell young entrepreneurs the same, you see improvement happening, you're onto something. I think through 2001 to 2003 were our darkest years, uh, but were also our best years, because it really tested, you know, it's trial by fire. It really tests how much you believe in your own business. We completely bootstrapped, uh, you know, many of us took back virtually nothing. I took back nothing, a salary for 18 months from Make My Trip.
but that again uh, paid off in the long run. 2003 things started to improve. Uh, we managed to break even our business, we managed to make a little bit of a profit and then 2005 onwards I think things got much much better and then we launched in India and the whole game changed. I think it's different strokes for different folks. I am quite happy to take advice and to listen to people and then of course make your own decision. You know every now and then something new will come out and I'll reach out to an expert and I think that's why you need a board. And whether it's our regulatory board or our board of advisors, so you know, Sanjeev's on our board of advisors, Irina Vittles on our board of advisors, plus we have now five independents on our board, I actually reach out to them. When we started Helion, our bet was that the internet penetration in the country is going to grow. So that was one theme that we wanted to play in the consumer internet arena. And then within that, we found that travel was a very large vertical. Most importantly, it was the man himself, which is Deep and his uh, management team. We got a sense that this is a team which is a good combination of innovation, which is what you need to start a business, and scaling, which is what delivers returns to investors. I think one of the biggest differentiators from MMT is that it's a brand that evokes. I think we probably invested between 8 to 10 million dollars. Uh, and over a period of time, we have sold our stake. One of the very interesting achievements of Make My Trip, the way they kept reinventing themselves. I think my family, my wife was definitely very supportive. Uh, I think she was very clear and she's always been very clear on one thing. Uh, come home happy, whatever you're doing. Because if you're not going to come home happy and you're going to come home stressed out, uh, there's a good pressure where you know things are growing and things are great and there's a good pressure but there's a bad pressure where you're just unhappy. I'm one of those if I'm unhappy for a week, there's a problem. I mean I, I get very restless so I have to figure out why. So I think she had seen that I wasn't enjoying corporate world too much. Uh, she had also seen me working on the business plan and being super excited every night. So post dinner I would settle down uh, and uh, you know work half the night and next morning basically tell her you know slept at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. working and you know share with her what I was doing. So I think she, she realized that I was very passionate about what I wanted to do. Superhero